The next system we want to show you is the auditory system, or the ears. One of the things we get in the history is a client will say, my horse has started to shy at something. Uh, do you think that he can hear well? Or do you think he has have some defect in his hearing that's making him do that? And you know, there's, well, I'm not aware of any really great hearing test in the horse. And so, you know, sometimes with something obvious, maybe you might figure something out, but in general, I don't think we can assess their hearing very well. Yeah, that's a, that's a real tough one for me too, I agree with you. Now the big thing is that horses don't like their ears examined. Now we do it, but we know that we're getting a rather cursory examination most of the time. But So we have checkers, who, a very docile horse, but he lets us look at his ears a little bit, but then he gets a little tired of it. You often need a flashlight, we're paying attention to the inside of the pinna of the ear. Uh, we get a lot of insect bites there. We can get some skin uh, sensitivity. Uh, I can see down into the ear a little bit with my light. Uh, certainly if I try to touch down there, he doesn't like it, and then he starts to get mad about the whole thing. But we can learn a lot just by how the horse is reacting with his ears, how he's carrying the ears, what he's doing. Is he carrying one ear lopsided? an abnormal carriage, is he shaking his head, is he twitching that ear, uh, things like that. What about, do you find with head trauma? Well, you know, sometimes after a, a skull fracture, you know, head trauma up high there on the head, you'll actually see bleeding from an ear, and, you know, that, that's a fairly scary thing and, and warrants some further diagnostics, you know, maybe some radiology or that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But we don't like to see fresh blood coming from an ear, especially no. after some sort of a, no, that's, that's sort of a, a head bad blow. Sign. That's not a good deal. Um, we often don't see an otitis and discharge from the ear like we do with dogs. No. Um, well, I think they're not dependent ears, you know, the ears are sticking out. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a rare thing. I think I've only seen mites, ear mites in a horse once. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, the other thing that you get called for frequently are head shakers. You know, mm -hmm. the horses, the, uh, the behavior where they start like, getting a little twitch when they're, when mm -hmm. they're being ridden. And people frequently ask you to examine the horse's ears in conjunction with head shaking. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and it's a, that's a diagnosis that we are plagued with, trying, trying to find out the, the real etiology for that sometimes. So uh, we have some other ancillary things that we can do if we really have to look down into that ear. Fiber optic uh, scopes, uh, get very small ones, you can slip quite far down. Even in a sedated horse though, uh, they won't let you go very far down into the ear. They mm -hmm. still have that response. So if you had to really examine uh, further down the ear canal, you'd probably have to put an under general, general anesthesia. anesthesia. It's but very, not that common. It's yeah, just not, it's not that, that common. common. You're absolutely right. But it's, uh, I guess the message is that horses don't like their ears fussed with most of the time. And the person handling has to be very careful uh, that they're out of the way that the horse is apt to throw his head, they're going to throw it rather sporadically, uh, spasmodically, and you don't want to get bopped with the head. Yep. So that's the big take-home message, I think, with the ears.